Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. Relaxing on a beach in sunny Miami. Uh, that's a William Shatner impression. Um, as I spend more time on this planet... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mike O'Mara Show. As I spend more time on this planet, I become indelibly aware of one irrefutable fact. And that fact is, and write this down if you're, if you're a student of this show and, you, and you've followed my teachings over the years, please understand that uh, I, I think it's important for you to note it's always something. <laughs> Now that uh, that That's can be life. put in the same book with "Don't Get Happy and You Don't Matter." Yeah, yeah. But it's always something. It's always and also something. to a certain extent, Mike. What are you going to do? Uh, uh, no, no. The what are you going to do? I don't subscribe to uh, because the what are you going to do is well, I can't do anything about it. I uh, and 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 I think that is. But but Rob has been through the mill. So Rob saying, "What are you going to do?" is kind of his defense mechanism for. All of the things that life has thrown at him. Would that yeah, be for accurate? The show, but for the show is don't get happy. Yeah, uh, but the, he, the, Mike the, was talking the, about no, life. No. Life is don't get happy. Oh, I thought the show was don't no. get happy. Well, to a certain extent, of course. Oh, I thought, well, the I show thought, is I don't thought, get happy. We've, yeah. I have for years uh, in the incarnations of, of, of radio shows, podcasts, and everything I've done, uh, I have felt as though if you take a victory lap, you are setting yourself up for a fall, and that is that pertains to uh, sports. There have been very few dynasties. There's the Yankees dynasty. Yep. Uh, you've got uh, the Patriots dynasty. They Chicago are Chicago Bulls. They they are once in a very good Rob, Thank very you. good sports reference. Thank you. Uh, they are they're rare. Mostly, you win, you lose. That's you're, right. win, you're top of the mountain, you're down in the gate. Some basement. people don't even get to the top. That's, That's why true. I, and probably who knows when Detroit will be back. What about what about a spin on what are you going to do and don't get happy? Well, and I think this is a common phrase now within the younger generation, mm-hmm. like maybe 30s and 20s. Take the L. Which yeah, is, I've yeah. heard this. Okay. Yes. I, Sometimes I would you got like to. to say, even though I defended Rob with his situation mm-hmm. of uh, of what are you going to do, I you know, and this is the ABCs of me. I in no way wish to be associated with that quote. Yeah, My I don't quote like is that don't quote. get happy. What are you going to do? Is uh, I try to, you know, I have make my, my quote. Own if I I love to, if that'd be great. What's yours? I, I love mine. Get over it. Get over it is good. That's a good. Get one. over it is good. Yeah. That can uh, apply to a situation that's not perfect. I get and it. And you move on or yourself. I get and then it. there's get my over. there's my quote, which is I guess exclusive yeah, to you me. You got to be a little louder. I can't hear you that well. My quote, which I guess is exclusive to me, is uh, I'd like another piece, please. <laughs> <laughs> or or could it be could we modify that a little bit? And say, sure. Just one more just one more piece. Just one more piece. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's please. Lovely. Are you gonna have that? <laughs> The <laughs> under the heading of uh, <laughs> you're gonna eat your tots. Yeah. <laughs> under the heading of it's always something. Um, minutes ago, I uh, uh, we had a 8:30 uh, a.m. call today, which allows me to take care of a few things for my lovely bride, dropping right. my kid off at school and putting gas in her automobile, which is great. And uh, for the last couple of weeks, we have been aware that some. Weird things are happening in the house. There is speculation that there might be vermin of some kind. Ooh, I hate vermin. The greatest evidence would be in the laundry room, uh, just a little dollop, which appeared to be rodents (laughs) of some kind. Like rice size scat, like a mouse? Yeah, the rat mouse scat. Everybody knows that. Here's the thing. I've had mice. I've uh, had rats, too. And you've had rats. This... And hamsters. This yeah, was I a tad it. larger than S- than mouse them. droppings. Would you say, like, uh, just to put it in perspective, like the size of a raisin? 
No, not not nearly that big, oh, but okay. larger than a mouse dropping. Smaller, uh, l- slightly slightly larger than a grain of rice. Like Does, a, a snow cap? <laughs> no, not no. You're Gross. still too. Can we stop this exercise, Gross. please? Yes. We get it. We get um, it. So you're uh, into poo. We can't. Oh, I knew stop name. it! I'm into snow caps. Is what I'm into. The exterminator was just here moments ago. He was uh, behind me uh-huh. on a ladder, looking up in the attic. Now, two things have happened. I noticed that little piece of scat, and Carla did too. And then I have been coming into the uh, studio, and on a couple of occasions, there has been, uh, I, I don't, it's not plaster, but there's been mm. flakes of uh, maybe insulation, or it's not even a, uh, something that's around the heating duct. The heating duct is right above my head. So stuff mm-hmm. that is normally sedentary stuff that's has been from disturbed. Above that's that's yeah. scattered and kind yeah. of like, like, mm-hmm. like something's been rooting around up there. Yeah. I don't know what it was, mm-hmm. I, but I had no idea. So he got up there and he took along. He said, well, yeah. But not recently. And I said, well, what about that? Oh, he said, that's recently. And then he goes in. Oh, no. And he says to my wife, and I see the look of horror on her face. He says, this neighborhood is known for having a problem with palm rats. Ooh. <laughs> look that up. Palm rats. Palm rats. And then... Like someone from the palm? No. Yeah. It's, palm it's, it's, trees it's, it's, it's are rodent. places where rats reside. And then... Were you familiar with the notion of a palm rat before he brought indeed. it up? I was indeed. Okay, here's great. your problem. Your palm rat oh, gets in a palm tree gross. in a residential neighborhood, lives up there, and... Pops into houses if the access is close to the house. You guys remember that palm in my front yard? Yeah, the big yeah, one? yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe the biggest palm on the street? Yes. There's Mac a palm rat. Palm Just rat like a normal place. rat. Yeah. Normal rat. There it is. Palm and, rat. And he looks at my wife and she said, Well, how big? Uh, what, what, what is their average size? And that's when he looks at my, oh, <laughs> my no. wife and he puts his hands apart like this. Oh. Yeah. And that's when she says, Oh my God! They're oh. on my feet. Look uh, at this. Well, I mean, you remember palm that palm rat infestation running rampant in Cape Coral. Mm? That's yeah, close to you. There right? you go. Yeah. Neighborhood uh, down the street. Look, Whenever uh, you see a uh, a movie like with an assassin, they're always high up in a building waiting to get their target. This is the advantage the palm rat has because he's already what thirty feet in the air on your palm tree. He can just, just uh, jump in and attack. Speculation right here. I believe Rob Spiewak was just making that whole thing up. Yeah, but are you just okay. saying trees are tall so they have an advantage? They're yeah. not shooting anything, Rob. They're just uh, they're yeah. Well, no, no. I'm saying home. that when you want an advantage, you go up higher. And the and the Rob, rat. A lot of people don't realize Rob had a very lengthy career. Uh, what branch of the intelligence agency was it where you were? Uh... The lower intelligence agency. <laughs> And I excelled. They said, of all the idiots, you're one of the best. I said, should I move up? They said, no, you're fine right here. The lower intelligence agents. That so we got palm t-shirt. rats. And then, <laughs> and then, and this is after Carla took over paying the bills last night. Yeah. And I came back from taking Michael to flag football. Because mm-hmm. that's my primary job. I'm a chauffeur. That's what I do. Yeah. And she says, Well, you're a we, father is what you And she says, we need to talk. And I'm like... <laughs> and uh and so he says well we'll have to get you on the rat program i'm like oh, here mm. and and immediately it's like ka-ching ka-ching, ka-ching doesn't ka-ching. involve mike mcintosh we learned that on the show yesterday yeah the rat yeah. no he won't be he, he won't, won't be, be. He, he, he because snitch. snitches get so. stitches yeah um so that's where we are now with the uh 400 per six months I, I checked that oh, out. Oh, so it's not a one-time thing. It is a full-fledged no. program. Yeah. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that, that's, that's how they how get my, you. Uh, Mike, that is how they get you. What about... And by the way, the Palm Rats, yeah. at least yes. I was informed by this guy, who I really love. I love our exterminator. I've always had a great relationship with uh, the guys in that business. I like the guys in Well, that you're business. a blue-collar guy. They're, they're... <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. Ass. 
Uh, when he goes are. down to the corner bar, has a beer with the exterminators. I'm more blue collar than both of you do. You, I, right. well, I you are said, wearing I never a, said I, I never said I was blue collar, and you have a blue collar today. Than both of you I never do. said I was uh, I'm white more of a redneck than both of you. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm so happy you said that. Mm -hmm. uh, Mac and I, uh, <laughs> we drove. This is a love letter to Manassas, but we had my to go to Manassas. Former residence, my former yes. hometown. Oh, how nice, Devil Town. Um, I'm happy to report that El Taco is still there. Oh, and a El brand Taco. New building. With, you want to talk about a pretty ceiling. El Taco <laughs> with 15 layers of dust on the uh, the ductwork up above. The There's no drop ceiling for El Taco. It a lasts, Mike. The great full, stuff lasts. A wonderful sheets that I was not aware of in the, since the time you've moved. Oh, it's a really? New one. Uh, you mean the one that's yes. down near El Taco, that one? Yes, yeah. yes. Been around I was for not years. aware of that Been one. Been around for decades. Um, yeah, well, we haven't been down there in about a decade. I so. was yeah. living in a devil town. Yes. I didn't know it was a devil town. I did. Yeah, you did. Have you been a resident of Florida for 10 years? I've been a resident of Florida for 10 years, for a decade. Yeah. I told you. Oh, Mac, have you gotten like, your chip? No. <laughs> when was the last time you've been down here? And I was like, things look different. Um, and there are three lanes now down that road. Klein's is gone. Gone. And they've got two used, name two Yanta Susadas left. Those are used tires strong. for people yeah. that are not yeah. in the yeah. near. Is the tombstone place still there? No. That's a good, great question. Oh, I, loved, I loved driving by. I'm it. almost positive because there was a lot that was been demolished. Might be Klein's memorial. I think Klein had the ice cream shop <laughs> and the gravestone company. Good gig. <laughs> it was a feeder system. Yes, Pump them. Is. Pump them and dump them. Pump them <laughs> full of calories and fat. That's Kill right. them, then you get the granite. And Mike, it's them. the it's the Klein pump and dump. This is what it is. It's <laughs> oh, I got. I have uh, my buddy, the middle school band leader who uh, was at Cocoonville when I was there. Still there. Had tickets to Tower of Power that he wanted to unload on me, and oh, I couldn't go on Friday great night. Great show. But he's, a, you know, he's a music guy, and he knows I'm mm -hmm. a big band guy, too. So I'm on the phone with him, and he has the greatest idea, uh, the idea of idea. I'd, I'd, I'd break down doors to go to this party. So they have down here for the snowbirds, for this, like, welcome back. Every country clip down. Welcome yeah. back. Welcome oh. back. Welcome back. Well, I don't need to be welcome back. I live down here. All right? I live right. on the surface of the sun for four months of the year. I don't need to be welcome back. He wants, and a tribute to our wonderful guy, Doug Track. he thinks that in May we should have an AMF <laughs> party. Brilliant. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. That is the greatest. Day. And I may run with it. I may have an AMF, but I, might, I won't frame it that way. But I might, I'll do it more tastefully, but have no, the people. Oh, that, you will. Most yeah. of my friends are full timers down here. So I think, uh, well, I Mike, just call it Adios, my friend. <laughs> yeah, maybe I could do Adios, my friend, or whatever yes. other words you want to use. <laughs> AMF party. Hey, buddy. Oh, <laughs> is it a celebration of life? It's a celebration it is. Of, of them, the great entitled, mm. uh, going back, uh, you know. To their to their world, but so palm rats uh, begin the show. I know Ra uh, Oscar. I know you're an a expert on rats. Yes, um, they're resilient. Mm. They're yes. nasty. They're dirty. You mm. have an advantage though, Mike, as you have you are on a slab and you have no subflooring for them to flourish Correct. as they do. Yeah, in and Oscar's the slab place. is higher, so you've got the advantage. And there's certain days the on this show floor. where I think I'll be on the slab, you know, earlier. No, and I use no. the slab as the silence of the lambs. The Senator, four, when well, your daughter's on the slab. Eee. Well, you'll just stay there, Mike, until we can get the rotunda open in the U.S. Capitol for when you yes. lie in state. That's it. The, the $400, I, I, we did, we were just, I was just running all our numbers for our taxes. This, this Rolled weekend. into the uh, bill for the year. Fun. I, I get that. Mm -hmm. I think we spent $2,200 on exterminator fees last, last year. You can buy the poison. <laughs> Or you can hire an exterminator, which I'm sure just puts down a bunch of traps. We have, this is gross, and I'm actually ashamed to say, share this with you all. Oh, this excites me. <laughs> that makes me, have, I sit up when that happens. Oh, let me do that. <laughs> have you? We've all been to uh, 
a mall or um, a shopping center where you'll see the the commercial grade rat traps. Yep. Oh, they're like, like a black box. That's, yeah, they that's have just them here yeah. in the garage downstairs. Sure. They have plenty more now since the Volvo incident. We have those in our backyard. We have the we have two of those in our backyard where you know the gazalias are uh, or whatever they are, and um, we have two of them in our alleyway between the houses. My neighbor has two of them in his backyard. We have one of them right before the trash cans when you're about to cross this little gate where our trash cans are. It's, it, it, it you know, it, you're not going to win the war. It just, it's Can a I war. ask a gross question since you're yes. familiar with the commercial grade rat box trap? Yes. Do they ever have to be emptied? No, no. This is what um, ends up happening. I, I actually... I had a bad experience five years ago with the rat. Oh, drowning the rat. That did, didn't pass. I remember, I was, thought yeah. I was helping it out. Didn't work mm-hmm. out. Um, my neighbor is in charge of all the big boxes because I'm just not man enough to do it. I just can't do it. The, the, and, rat, the rat boxes? Yes. And mm-hmm. he um, he puts the poison in there. That's what they're putting outside here. Yeah. Boxes. And and it's toxic because you're like that 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 stuff. You wear like five rubber gloves. Like you're not even supposed to like do anything with right. it. Right. And so they they eat it, and then they walk away, and then it, it hits them wherever they are in life. Because in the old days, like decon, what yeah. it would do it would uh, de- get them in the <laughs> trap and, and kill them. Right? I know. It was- now I'm gonna co- do a callback on an old. Uh, I don't want to sneeze. I don't want to sneeze. A eh, eh. little cold in the O'Mara house. I've told you that. Sneezes are decon. good luck, Mike. Muhammad Ali did decon. Yes, he did. Roach spray. Mm-hmm. Decon. Roach spray. Mm. <laughs> Fight the decon. Decon. Roach spray. Mm. I, uh, the uh, decon for rats and mice, what it would do, they would come in to your house, normally in the fall and winter. They'd eat the decon, and it would dehydrate them. It's, and they'd go back outside. I think it's. it's a, I think it's the, sa- water. I, it's, it's the same setup. Okay. I think it's the same setup. Caught one in the uh, house once. Had to. It was so flat. I had to scrape him up. I watch. Would, uh, no I would yeah, rather that, save him. Yeah. At this point, after what roughly six years ago now, get a where terrier. I tried. Get a terrier. Oh, and Mike, why don't you just let uh, your snake out? Oh, I uh, no. Winslow could take care of him. This yeah. is how. This is how common they are in the streets, of these of, of DC yeah. or any big city. The dog doesn't even bark at him anymore. <laughs> That's terrifying. He's like, oh, That's, there goes well, that, a car. That, you know, with all due respect, rat. absolutely gorgeous dog, cute dog, yes. loving yeah. dog, yes. dog. Yes. With, you yeah. got a uh, you got a wimp dog with a with a bad knee. I mean, that's that. Your dog Santos is yeah. not bred for anything other than just companionship, right? Love. Instagram. Love. Winslow has a little heritage that uh, yeah. where he, you know, you, all you need to do is see him look at a rabbit and oh, cool. freeze like cool. a coiled yeah, cool. spring. Yeah. Uh, so he could take. But I'm, I'm talking about the videos where they go out to a farm, yeah. usually yeah. like in the U.K., and they send these terriers down and they, they just chase these rats. and like Yeah, that. but the, he wouldn't eat it. I'm saying that By the way, I'm let, not going to do that anymore. <laughs> if you let Jake <laughs> loose in your house and he finds a palm rat, not only will he kill it, he'll eat it. Yeah, but and I won't be able to recover him. I don't be. I won't be able to recover it. You know. Oh yeah. I mean, and then maybe that's karma. Maybe I'm getting karma because I feed him frozen rats and live rats, and you know, and the you rats take joy are, in it, watching it. Maybe yeah. They're, maybe they're freaked out with me, and they're coming to get me. They're coming to no. get me. They're you might be overthinking to, it. Uh, What's worse? Um, I heard possums are very sweet and nice. They just look scary. They're vermin, no, I think though. they're. I think they can go. You know, yeah. really like be. Yeah. Vicious. Uh, I thought they were just no. The worst, but the worst thing of all, I think we all know. We all know the worst thing is the raccoon. No, no, the raccoon is not the worst thing. My raccoon is the worst thing. Boyfriend Kenny Perot up in Hancock Point, Maine, when I was a little kid, and he had, I think it was called Chatter or something like that, Chatter or Scatter or whatever it was, uh, a little baby raccoon that he raised. Yeah, he kept as a pet, but he died of rabies, didn't he? Kenny Mm -hmm. did. No, <laughs> he might be gone. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, and uh, you know, and then he was the one that had the really long hair. And Harold Dow, the uh, harbor master, saw him yeah. for the first time, and he said, "Let me ask you a question. You stand, you stand up or sit down when you pee." 
Different time. And then the different harbor master time. was different later time. killed by a raccoon. Sitting Can a harbor truck. master be be canceled? Uh, not in those days. <laughs> and Harold Dow, maybe 400 pounds. <laughs> no and way. Sat, and sat in his truck and watched the harbor for hours with his with his pickup pulled over the dock that's no longer there because wow. that's cool warning though and high yeah. sea level. if he's just and looking he out on the water i love and, it and you would and he had a great lobster boat uh that yeah. he that he uh repurposed for a fishing boat and he would take out people for mackerel and one day mm. he told me would you like to come along and i was like it was dusk when they'd go out and get the mackerel uh-huh. and i ran from the dock to my house on a dead sprint and got to go out and got tons of my, it was one of the oh, best oh, so cool. Made. I Love thought it. you ran home because you thought he was going to show you his mackerel. No, 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 oh. not that kind of uh, not that kind of ombre. Show us on the doll, Mike. But show us on the doll. Dude. Not a healthy dude. <laughs> he would sit there and there would be a pile of unfiltered Viceroy cigarettes oh, next God. to his truck where he would chain smoke all day. At 400 pounds. I, and he lived a relatively long life. The sad thing is, Mike, is when you quit smoking, you normally gain weight. So he was this is the, true. the only thing he had keeping him alive. He was the one that famously, when my father tried to grow a beard, he said, why don't you put some cream on it and have the cat lick it off? It's great. He had those. And he, he just he would pop off with these because that was just his vernacular. Right. Back, and they're not that bad. They're not as many. Of those old guys up in the great state of Maine as there used to be. You can't really even tell a lot. You get to get a slight Maine accent from the guys that have been there their whole lives, but not uh, not the way it I used to be. I beg to differ. I feel like I've heard a lot of Maine when I've been up there. Well, it probably sounds like that to you, but to me, I don't have... Oh, I'm okay. talking about, there was a guy, and I told this story, and uh, it, Tommy and Toot, of yeah. the uh, Tommy Andrews and, and his uh, sidekick Toot at the boatyard, where... My father would be a, my my uh, father spoke the language, so he was able to communicate with him. But he would come up there and say, "Tommy," and Tommy would go, "Hello, Bill. Well, let's get with the chance that buddy, goddamn thing coming up right there. So we're gonna go up there and put folks uh, two, two, goddamn it, come up here right now. We got Bill's boat." Uh, and I would be standing next to my dad, looking up at Tommy, big fat guy. Uh, they were all fat. And then, uh, no, they weren't all that. Toot wasn't fat. Toot, Toot was skinny as a, roll, a rail. I want a, I want a friend named Toot. And Toot, well, Toot's only contribution to the toot. conversation. I'll be, I'll be Toot, and you ask me a question. No, you wouldn't ask Toot a question. But you would, you would it greet would go it. through so Tommy, right? It would all go through Tommy, but you could well, greet Toot. Go through his you know? Okay. And, like, you greet, greet him and give a, like, a, okay. a small talk. Yeah. So, uh, speak I, to Toot. How you doing, Toot? Beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Oh, they, yep. he's the guy that makes that noise. Your daughters yep. make that noise. <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah. were you, as a kid, you mm-hmm. were going to Maine your whole life. There were Mainers that even you had a hard time understanding? Oh, I, 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 you, it was impossible. It was so, it, wow. I, And there were heavy, he, and they're beautiful accents, man. I mean, it's beautiful. It really, it's just, uh, it's not like any accent in uh, in the United States. And it had this really wonderful, it was not like Pepperidge Farm remembers. It wasn't that accent. It was more of a down, it was a down east, yeah. like Maine water what accent. What you should do, you know? Mike, is uh, check out on Peacock. They're, uh, they're rerunning all the episodes of Murder, She Wrote. And Tom Bosley does a wonderful job with the Maine accent. Does he really? <laughs> Chef Amos Tupper. Uh, see, all those guys that try. A great bad example would be Fred Gwynn in Pet Cemetery. Oh, way over the top, right? But well, in they, the wrong it's direction. It's not over the top as much as they don't. It's nuanced, and they don't grab right. it. Right. And it's hard to grab it unless you get it. But if, you, if you're around it all the time, you know. I, I don't know if you noticed John Travalta. He, was, uh, he grabbed a jet. He played flying his jet plane up and down the coast. John Travalta? What the <laughs> F is that about? You know? and Who I, in your world and your family has the best main accent? Like just natural, Teddy probably does. No, not natural, but te- as far as recreating it, none of us okay spoke it all the time. But uh, but, but Teddy's, Teddy's hold on to it because Teddy's, Teddy's been around. Small, it. Every member of my uh, family does it, except uh-huh. for okay. uh, all, all the male members of my family yes. do it. And it is just it, you know over the years it's kind of drifted. Uh, we don't do it like we we used to do it all the time. So well, hello. Yeah. It's, where, it's where Dick Queasy came from, you know? Yep. This uh, discarded seafood is going to be on your plate, and it's going to be fantastic. Get... That's where we're going to go. Okay, this is crazy, and I'm sorry. Thank you for indulging yeah. me. Yeah. 
I know that, and I'm, and I'm learning at least, that shtick that you used to do before just somehow doesn't resonate when people not just grow up, but things change, yeah. nature and life changes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and you, you forget like how what, like the stuff you used to do is, is probably not as funny for some people. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's probably, it's, there are people that like the idea 20 years ago better than they would like it today because it's just not, you, you see people on the news in Maine and it'll be like, well, we really felt that, uh, you know, yeah. it's, just, yeah. it's sad yeah. because, it, but as more, see, that doesn't happen everywhere. I think in certain parts of Massachusetts, and I have always believed this, in a certain segment of Massachusetts, and a lot of them move down here, so I know some of these guys, mm -hmm. there is a requirement that not only you have this dialect, which I will give you in a second, yeah. but you have the raspy voice, and you have to be under five feet seven to, to do it. And, I, and they're all that size, and they're all like, they all have this. Hello, Michael. How are you? All right, fantastic. Why is my voice like this all the time? I don't understand. You don't understand. But we're going to go up to Boston, and we're going to go see a Red Sox game. All right? Yeah. I, I, I'll, you'll be proud that my nephew, Sebastian, who's yes. seven now, yeah. he, uh, he's starting to get a Boston accent. Because and it is that's a tough funny. accent. And the tough act, I think the toughness, we could talk about dialects because it's one of my favorite subjects all day. I think you adopt that because it's kind of like a tough guy accent. I yeah, think it's that's like, why Matt uh, Damon and Ben Affleck were able to grab it so much, you know? They, they, they talked like that. You talked yeah. like that up there. Yeah. He, was, not, he not called me to talk trash about the Ravens right after the game was over. Right. A seven-year-old. Like, I love that he would call me, he's like, so did you see the game? Right. You know? <laughs> did you see the game, Oscar? Yeah. Did you see what happened to him? T.O. Yeah. Oscar. They're, uh, hey, T.O. Oscar, uh, I, guess you're, I guess your Ravens aren't going to uh, roll into our yard anymore, are they? Huh? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Bill Burr's got the greatest, uh, you know, he's got a natural so Boston good. accent, which is, uh, which is I, fantastic I, 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 to I said, my, I said to my brother, if you, if, um, if you don't want, if, uh, watch out, he's going to sound like Ted. The teddy bear. Right. By right. the time he's 16. <laughs> I had a guy. Mike, it's funny you bring up Bill Burr. I actually have a brief Bill Burr tape, if you want okay. to hear it. This, I keep this you know, in the audio vault just on standby. Okay. And you're right. He's a good, funny man with a good accent. I love stories. I can tell you right now, when someone's telling you a good story, you always can tell because their voice drops like three drops. octaves, like a minute into the story. It starts off in a normal tone, always like normal. Man, I went to the bar last night. The place was packed. All of a sudden, this chick came in, man. I told don't leave. He's like, run, 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 run. <laughs> That's the good part. That's the evil. I want to hear that. Good stories are always told quietly, but bad stories are always told way too damn loud. You'd be like on the bus. You'd be sitting in the front row of the bus, and there's some jackass 20 rows back telling the worst story ever, and you can hear every word of it. Oh, my God, we were watching TV last night. It was unbelievable. All of a sudden, you shut up. We were like, wow, that never happened before. Then we realized the cat knocked the plug out of the outlet. <laughs> shut up! I may... All right, that's great. Wish All right. so I may, great. That's I believe Bill Burr, as far as comedians go, is like wine. Bill Burr You're gets right. so much better with age, and uh, that is on my bucket list. I One would love to go see him. One of the best calls for when when I did the ad buys for Man Great back in the day. Did you call Bill him? Burr? Bill Burr was on the call. Mm. And guys are funny, just naturally funny. I'm yeah, sure. yeah, and yeah. I'm not doing what the big ad. Like I'm, I'm on the other side. Like I'm basically saying, this is what the this make it your own. Just we've done it a, a bunch. Yeah. That's why I think we're so good at what we do is because we've been on both sides, mm -hmm. right? And um, and he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I grew up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's just like so like, n not even like dismissive, but right. just perfect. Like yeah, I know how to grow. Yeah, I like lamb chops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like. And I'm just going through the copy just briefly. This is the quickest call I had. At, yeah, at, I get you. I yeah. get you, Oscar. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's it. Thanks. All right, I don't. I don't need any further instructions. We're not putting together uh, an IKEA stereo system here, Oscar. You and know? I'm 30. I'm probably 33. And I'm. A, uh, this is before Bill like became who Bill is. Right. Um, I'm 45 now, so we're talking about over a decade ago, and. And, and I'm like, I'm like, look, I get this. This is this will be over soon, I promise, uh, Bill. I just got to read this just so you have it, so we're all on the same page. Did I? And his agent, his agent goes, 
Bill, he's just being nice. He's trying to give you money. Relax. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Just the, the, you got funny. you got what you and you were loving every minute of it. I I'm loved sure. it. I loved it. I got Did it. Did I tell my uh, anniversary joke on the show yet? Have I told that that I got no. from a Bostonian? I don't no. think so. Uh, one of the guys no, no. that works at Happy Valley and uh, and gave me and I'll do it with a I'll do it with a New England accent. Nice. See if I can do it justice because it's the way he gave it to me. All right. Uh, so uh, there's a married couple, right? And they're, uh, they're they've been together 50 years, and they decide they're going to celebrate their anniversary by going out to dinner. And uh, they're sitting there at dinner, and she looks across at her husband of 50 years, and he knows he's got a tear coming down his cheek. And she looks at him, and she says, Honey, are you crying? He says, Yeah, yeah, I am. She said, I didn't know you're the emotional type. 50 years we've been together, and you're crying. You're crying because it's uh, our anniversary? He says, uh, yeah, Sort of. So what do you mean by sort of? Well, you remember, honey, 50 years ago when your uh, father caught us in the barn? Yeah, I remember that. Well, you know, he said to me, uh, if you don't marry my daughter, I'll put you in jail for 50 years. And I was just thinking this would be about the time that I'd be getting out. <laughs> uh, 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 but anyway. That it, was good. They, uh, it's just I love dialects, and I love Maine. And if you can indulge me just very briefly yeah. before we go to break here. <laughs> Sorry, no Kobe. No Kobe for Oscar, no Kobe yes, for me. Yes, yes. Right. If it's COVID, Plaxovid. I refer to February as the, the suck month. I hate it. I yeah. hate it. And I primarily hate it. And this, if you want to, if you want to know something that makes you feel old, that my father, God rest his soul, has been gone for 31 years. Mm. Wow. He passed 31 years ago. I think I've got the uh I think I've got the date right. Yeah. And uh this is this is like his I, I was looking up his obit and I had to get a free subscription to the Hartford Current. You know, a trial because I couldn't yeah. open it. Damn it. You couldn't, you couldn't spring for it? I, I, I sprung for it. I support local it. journalism. Yeah. I was a uh, uh let's well, at least now you can journalism. read Nancy every day. So yeah. for for my father. Who does not have a trace of a Boston accent, but I'm using it for some reason. Did he do one it's in when, my he was, head. when he was with us? Could he, he do one? He probably did. They all did. Okay. They all did. They did main accents in Boston. And my father one night, he had a couple of cocktails and he was doing Buddy Hackett. And he was what? like a little tuned up That's and he was just cool. doing Buddy Yeah, you know, Buddy Hackett. And I was laughing that my ass off. Yeah, hey, Buddy Hackett. Fantastic. Buddy Hackett would take a seat and go outside with a sledgehammer. <laughs> um, he was, uh, let's see. So he lived in my hometown, Glastonbury, Connecticut, 40 years. This is a r middle America, ladies and gentlemen. Same little small town for 40 years. He was hired as a copywriter. There you go, Rob. A yeah. copywriter mm -hmm. in Aetna Life and Casualty. He retired as the director of marketing communications and services. He was in the communications biz, and he passed away. Uh, the first week in February, he was 77 years old. That's many circles today considered a little young because it of the is. smoky, smoky. It was complications due to COPD, probably. That's what it would have been. And he had dealt at. with that for a long time. So Absolutely. He, for a, uh, he, had, he died at 77, and he got really sick in 1977 when I was graduating high wow. school and my sister was getting married. Yeah. So, I'm so old. I'm so old. Uh, he was born. I never do this. I always talk about my mom. I never talk about my dad. Yeah. He was born in New Haven where he attended local schools, graduated from, I love his high school's name. It sounds like something out of a horror movie. Hill House High. <laughs> yes, it the does. murders on Hill House High. Uh, he was a graduate of the College of the Holy Cross and was an Army captain in the Pacific during World War II. He was a former president of the Advertising Club of Hartford and a former director and president of the Insurance Advertising Conference. And I used to, at one point, I listened to tapes that he had from when he was doing, all advertising is good advertising. And he had that yeah. kind of 1940s speak. Yeah. With advertising, you have to go to them. Da, da, da. They all talk like that. That's the way you were supposed to be an announcer back in the day. And now it's like, you know, Doritos, got to happen. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, he was a member of the Hartford Chamber of Commerce. That's my old man. That's his. Uh, that's his obit that's right cool. there. And uh, I was thinking about for a very, very long time. I would, 
in the middle part, like 10 years into his passing, I would be I would surprise myself that at a certain week, I would get this really just, I would feel like crap. I'd be angry. I'd be sad. And I, and I realized it was just uh, that time of year uh, mm. with that. But it's amazing when you think 31 years ago. That's mm -hmm. been that long. And you know what that makes you realize? That clock on the wall, people. All right? It flies. It so does. hug the ones you love and enjoy the company of the ones you love because yeah. it can go. And, you know, and they've, they've been uh, gone. And my mom, God bless her, lived a good long life after he passed. But the smoky, smoky, as so many people in that era, uh, you know, uh, bought the farm because of uh, cigarette smoking. Yeah. Everybody it's, smokes. Can I ask a question? They smoke when they were like. 12 years old. Yeah. I want to ask a All, question about your, about your pop, Mike. Yes. Is when you read that, he was your dad. I mean, obviously, you know, you did dad things with him. Yeah. Does it, were you aware of his civic involvement and his professional involvement when he was around? Or does that I wasn't aware sort of, of that eye because I was too young at that point. What I was right. aware of was when he retired, when I was uh, getting close to uh, graduating high school. And because he was in copywriting and marketing and they did print ads and they did TV ads, they didn't do a lot of TV ads, they did radio ads. Yeah. And he, my mom told me this, and I don't know the details because I think you, I don't want to say embellish, but I think you paint a picture. But the picture she paints of my father that he enjoyed as much as uh, success in his own career, he really enjoyed camaraderie. More, more yeah. than that. He enjoyed the people around him. And that was more important to him. And that, that's one thing we kind of have similarly. I like to work collaboratively. I don't like to work any other way. And so I think that he enjoyed that. And he would, in his department, he would promote people. And mm -hmm. those people, in many cases, would move on. And he was cool with that. He liked that. But when he retired, they put together a book a huge book that uh, I think my sister has it now of, of all course. of his accomplishments that was so damn funny because they said Bill was in advertising and was famous for his near misses. And it was a <laughs> bottle. It was a bottle of a green soda called Six Up, which was I mean, right. They were just funny with a. With, uh, That's uh, just funny. And, you yeah. know, and Kathy did the same thing for me on my uh, 30th birthday where the funniest thing she put in the book was, uh, Mike, uh, you know, there were all these different pictures, and then you open to the page. Mike enjoyed many warm moments in Hancock Point with his cousins, and it's a black page. <laughs> 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 Which was just funny. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he did that. And then, above and beyond that, when he retired, they did a musical for him. They did a recorded uh, wow. music segment for his retirement party. That's so better loved. than a gold watch or anything like that. Yeah. And uh, they, you don't get that if you're hated. No, you don't get that if you're if you're hated. You just don't. No, get they're not it. doing no. that. They're going to no, say, "Hey, no, thanks no, a lot no, and stuff." No. They actually did a presentation yeah. for him. So That's this cool. one was, and it's like my wild Irish Bill. His thoughts were always nil. <laughs> 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 they're busting his balls. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a hell of a guy from Old Hill House High, where they all love him still. And then came the day when William went away to Old Holy Cross, where he bo where his books gathered moss, and he <laughs> learned how to pray. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that. So that's what I remember from uh, cool. from his career. The only other thing I remember is that. The old Etna Life and Casualty, Hartford, the insurance capital of the yeah. world, the yeah. old building, monument to corporate America. Man, these buildings, I thought this was the I, most massive place in the world. May yeah. I give Rob some context, at least for the first time I drove through Hartford? Yeah, mm -hmm. please. I've uh, never been. So so imagine 395 in D.C., mm -hmm. yeah. just for those of you who are in the area. Right. And instead of uh, seeing the monuments, you see these monuments to insurance because the, those are the towers. All wow. All yeah. All big be, travelers tower. Yes. It's a good yeah. picture. Yeah. Casually yeah. building, yeah. Yeah. and then they built the. Yeah. Uh, they built but the, the, the new, right off the highway. They, they, like, they built the seventies the one next to it, which was this slab of concrete that they all hated, and uh, and it was just. And I'd go once a year to the Christmas party where employees would take their kids, and we'd watch Tom and Jerry in the in the theater. And uh, my dad and I, he turned me on to uh, more than anything else. I will always be grateful. He brought me Buddy Rich. 
And yeah. Buddy Rich became one of my passions in life. I loved his music, and that's what my dad gave me. It's a li- lasting legacy for me, which is why get your kids into different things. Yeah. Share with them. Even if they don't want to be shared with, do that. We are running really late. So, Papa, yeah. William Joseph O'Mara, love you, and uh, God rest your beautiful soul up there with my mom right now. We will take a break, and my, we will come back with The other quick takeaway the, is uh, yes. print that obit so you don't have to subscribe to the current. <laughs> Thank you. Rob. I have it around somewhere. <laughs> you know, I'm not a saver. I'm terrible at that. Uh, we'll take a break. Be right back on the Michael Mara Show. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't reinvent yourself. Rehydrate yourself with Liquid IV. Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than water alone. I like Liquid IV so much that when I'm playing in a golf tournament, I will hydrate myself out the wazoo so I can lose. Uh, it, uh, it comes in a delicious stick. Uh, no sugar, no artificial sweeteners. You can feel like a hydrated new you, ready to take on the world. Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drinks, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. It's so good and so easy. Just add it to your water bottle, shake it up, and go. 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 Try a white peach. Green grape. Turn it up here. Well, my favorite. Lemon lime. <laughs> uh, actually, I love I love them all, and you will too. Make it a, a Liquid IV 2024 and be the best that you can be. Start your day with a double dose, just like the elegant Mrs. Z. Uh, <laughs> rehydrate yourself uh, with the new year coming. Uh, well, it's already here. It's here. It's here. Uh, very good. Uh, let's see. Uh, grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier, sugar free in bulk nationwide at Costco, or get 20 percent off your first order. Uh, when you go to liquidiv.com and use our code TMOS at checkout. Oh, my homeowner's insurance guy just called. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike, you, t- you say the word insurance, insurance and they hear you. Yeah. The Kraken Justin. just bundled his insurance. Well, in Florida, it's a different conversation, right? Yeah. It's like, hey, we're still, we're still in business. Whoopee. Whoopee. <laughs> That's their know. motto. Shut us down. <laughs> Whoopee. Uh, what happens in Vegas won't stay in Vegas during Super Bowl week, according to Joe Buck. Um, having been a veteran of the pregame festivities in uh, Super Bowl cities for a good chunk of my career, I can get that. The ESPN broadcaster predicted, this is funny. Now, sometimes Joe Buck just makes me laugh, and this Uh makes me laugh. I don't think he's a particularly funny guy, but I think he's funny saying this. The ESPN broadcaster predicted that something is going to happen, and it's going to be a mess. Amid the festivities in Sin City leading up to the big game between the Chiefs and 49ers on Sunday, February 11th. Here's his quote. I do not have any desire to be there, Buck said of Super Bowl 2024 during a Monday appearance on the opening drive on ESPN in St. Louis. It's a lot of logistics. It's a lot of congestion. I'm not that way. I'm not looking for the Maxim party and going out all (laughs) night. It's just not my thing. And then you combine that with Vegas. There's going to be some story. There's going to be something that happens because it's Vegas and it won't stay in Vegas. It's going to be a big something that happens. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. He's right, though. I think that it is going to be a mess in my mind. I hope not. Because when I hear that, it makes me think that something really bad could happen. Like um, no, I think it's going to be Vegas. something. It's going to be a scandalous something. Really? Well, okay. yeah. You're probably familiar with Bomani Jones uh, from the right time with Bomani Jones, mm-hmm. not just the podcast, but the HBO show at one point, like, yes. etc. Right? Mm-hmm. And um, so Bomani and Fox with their friends, and he does they each do each other's podcast. And on one of their shows, I can't remember if it was on Bomani's or Foxworth's. Uh, Bomani says, look, I'm not, I don't drink, I don't do that much, like, I want to get my rest, I got a bunch of stuff going on. Right. Uh, um, and because, you know, they're, 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 everyone's growing up, and, but it's Vegas, so that there's an enticing aspects to Vegas. It's yeah. so sometimes like, difficult even, to avoid Vegas's... Even you if know, you don't stuff. drink, there's so much stuff going on right. that you're like, okay, well, I'm going to do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I met Bomani a handful of times in person here. He was super nice. And he says, I've always said, and this is something along the lines of what Mike used to always say, but a different perspective, hmm. uh, nothing's coming down after midnight except for someone's draws. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's a variation on nothing good happens after midnight. Yes. And really avoid the fourth location. The f- 
The fourth. The third. <laughs> the second. <laughs> Okay. Really, the second. It gets, Oscar, it gets shorter yeah. and shorter all the time. I used to be. I used to be a. Oh my God! I'd be a. I'd be a five person on certain. Nights. Yeah, That's... and you'd yell at anyone who was with you that didn't want to go to the fifth. Come one on! <laughs> and then you watch uh, Shanahan's um, a press conference. Did you see that he was hammered at the press conference? No, you didn't see this. Oh no! Do we have the clip? Oh, you can pull it up. Please, um, Mac, find the yeah, clip. Yeah, find it, Mac. I have to see this. I have he's to see He's not this. slurring, but you can tell he's been drinking. That he's had a cocktail too at a yes. press conference. Yeah, at at the radio some radio row like yeah. in the evening. Wow. Oh, yes. Mac, if you find that uh it, now is it is the buzz that he was buzzed? Is it getting I saw it, I thought it was like a fake story at first and then I found other links and then other links and other links and I'm like, "Ah, it's Vegas. Well, yeah. It's already something happening. So Joe Buck yeah. is already right. Well, See, you know, scandal, scandal. It's, it's a scandal. Uh, rolling into the Super Bowl. And if you find that, Mac, just let us know. Uh, I don't know if this is the biggest giveaway in the history of Super Bowl ad promotions, but this is big. DoorDash wants to give one lucky winner one of everything being yes. advertised during Super Bowl. Uh, they've already started a list of prizes, and it just keeps growing. This is great promotional idea as somebody comes from old radio where we gave away big prizes mm -hmm. here we go uh let's see a i'll start with the uh the meh one 10 uh number 10 a fan duel kickoff uh a fan duel kick of destiny helmet i have no hey, idea look what at that, that is that's but memorabilia nice. yeah. okay uh 60 bottles of mountain dew bah blast <laughs> okay Yum. uh 288 packages of peanut butter m&ms Okay. A 30-pound bucket of mayonnaise. Gross. Oh. 1,000 Popeye's wings. Uh, and, Ten servings. Uh, uh, 80 drumstick ice cream cones. Mm. Uh, a Clydesdale horse saddle. This is oh, that's cool. And as yet yeah. to be announced, Volkswagen. A Kia EV9 SUV. Here we go. And and a BMW i5 M60 Good. electric vehicle. <clears throat> uh, that's pretty amazing. You're getting so much earned media because this is such a creative giveaway. Yeah. It's a great giveaway. Yeah. It's, a, it really it's a creative giveaway. Also, a quick note, um, there's going to be so many cosmetics firms for the first time advertising throughout the Super Bowl uh -huh. because of the Taylor Swift effect. Yes. Brand new. Germ glow skin uh, included. The average price is going to be for the for the spots went oh, from five it. million. I've got. Oh, you got it. Okay, thank uh, you. A thirty second ad during Sunday's game costs about seven million dollars. Mm -hmm. That is basically the same as last year, Oscar. And advertisers think it's worth it. Last year's game was watched by one hundred fifteen point one million viewers. I'd like to do a shout out to all the people that are advertising on the Super Bowl. Do you know you can get sixty seconds on the Mike O'Mara show for even yes. less? Doppel. Just a little, just a just little, just a little less. less. So yeah, Doppel. call it. Absolutely. His name is Oscar. But, oh, as Oscar value. mentioned, they're they're citing the uh, Taylor Swift factor for that. So, yes. Well, uh, I just I I thought it was it, the fact that they're going to have exclusively four women mm -hmm. is that's something that you never you think of Budweiser. And there it is. The, the Women whole, drink Budweiser. The whole like, conspiracy you know I mean. that we like to say with Taylor Swift. And see, that's it. The revenue yep. going up. Revenue, revenue, revenue. Uh, yeah. Taylor Swift is threatening to sue a college student from the University of Central Florida, uh, UC, uh, UCF, as it's called down here, uh, oh. who's been tracking her private jet. The student has been running a social media account that tracks the activity of private jets and helicopters owned by celebrities and other rich people. A 2022 report even showed that Taylor is the biggest celebrity carbon dioxide polluter. Hmm. Uh, Taylor's team, excuse me, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, Taylor's team considers the tracking to be, quote, stalking and harassing behavior. I bet Jelly uh, Roll makes a lot of CO2. Uh, going... <laughs> As far as to call it a Mr. Methane, uh, going as far as to call it a life or death matter for Taylor. Ooh, heavy duty. Uh, the student says he's not doing anything wrong because the information he gathers is public, including her tour schedule. Quote, this information is already out there. Her team thinks they can control the world. For what it's worth, Taylor recently downsized to just one private jet. So Actually, what private. I'm doing is all public knowledge, and there's nothing wrong with it. Elon Musk had the same issue with uh, an account holder 
that was tracking his private jet. Yeah. So much so that he offered him $50,000 to just stop and give it, give it over. Exactly. Uh-huh. I, I don't think it got res- resolved, but there's a different, maybe this is old school, you know, 45 year old Oscar, but it, there's a different me when it, when a, when a, a celebrity that happens to be female says it. Yeah. It, and, I agree. And I don't know if he's got a case, but it's tough. Uh, oh, you do okay, have here we a go. way to go, Mac. All right, so the Oscar, uh, set this up for us, okay? Okay, so you all know Radio Row, and you know... Yep. Uh, this is bigger. Overall... This looks like it's a, perhaps a bigger room because it's more of a formal... It's a press conference. Okay. It's a, it's a, it's a, what's that called? Oh, I wish I knew more about it. That, they used to do that, it in an auditorium. They always yeah. find it Yeah, auditorium first night, you go out there, and you just bark a bunch of... Yep. And, and you have, media night. It's media day. Media yeah. day. Media day. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Mac. Hit it. We'll be all right. We're good. No, we're not. We're not going to completely change our schedule and do something crazy. Like, we'll deal with what we got, and it, we're we're good. <laughs> wow. Sounds like it. Not yeah. no waiting. Okay, just just wait. Just wait. This is going to get a bunch of questions. Uh, it depends. I mean, it's all so different. So I can't give you one answer, but. My biggest thing with our defense now is, yeah, I get how that first half went. It was the bad as it could be. But they also tightened up in the second half. And as they tightened up in the second half, our offense got rolling. And that's why we got a 10-point lead. And that's my main thing on Sunday. Like, no matter what we do, Chiefs are a good team. They're going to have their moments. And when they do, all right, we got to weather them. But when they don't, we got to capitalize. And when we capitalize, the offense got to balance it out. And if we do that at the same time as a team, I like our chances. All right. All right, I get it, right? I yeah. think I was, What's the true tell? The what true is tell's going to be you, you put uh, press conferences side by side and you see yeah. what's he like <sighs> and, like if the, because I Cuz like he to hit see the copy like. points. He it hit his copy points. Could be a guy points. that really doesn't uh enunciate well, but it looks to me like there's kind of a yeah, 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 yeah go. Th- we're getting I rolling. Think the, I yeah. think the lean rolling. The lean in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also I, no, the repetitiveness. I, I immediately, I was looking for it, and I got it, like right yeah. out of Yeah, you, okay, so you didn't have to fight. Yeah, because I, yeah. I saw it twice. I was like, wait a second. He's not, like, obliterated, well, but he's clearly had a cocktail. Yeah, be the first guy named Shanahan that's gotten ossified. I can guarantee you that with that name. <laughs> Hurley, holy, holy, Irish, and we have it in our jeans. We yeah. like to drink. We like to fight. We like to have some. All right, anyway. You're wearing we your Shanahan your hat jeans. today, Mike. Yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> there you go. How about that? Yes, sir. That'd be a fine sponsor right there if we'd ever get them. I'd wear them all. But, uh, we can't all tell time. what it is. Black Clover. There you go. No, I don't Isn't know. Isn't that a horror movie? It's a golf hat manufacturer. Thank you very oh. much. Oh, Appreciate I'm sorry. It. I don't know. Uh, finally today, if you think about it, <laughs> is it a little strange that we, uh, the way we apply deodorant, uh, only uh, to a few small areas, uh, like the pits primarily? Do yeah. you ever feel like you need more coverage? I've been listening to ads online about uh, these new products that seem to be making a little headway. I uh, hear them. Yeah. yeah. I hear them on CNBC. There are some products uh, out there that are whole body deodorants. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've like seen them on Peacock. There. Yeah. Uh, apparently, they're catching on. Searches for body deodorant have increased 27% since last year. And the full body deodorant hashtag on TikTok has more than 23 million views. Wow. Oh, the, I'm for uh, this. One expert says we're finding that people are struggling with body odor in general. Struggling. <laughs> Men, they're focused around their chest and private area. Chest? I throw deodorant on my chest. You put deodorant really? on your chest? Why? Yeah. If I know this is going to be a long day of rigorous work, I'll go. Really? I just yeah. do the pits. Yeah. Uh, I don't men- do it. It depends on the shirt I'm wearing as well. If it's, if it's an athletic shirt, I can do it. If it's a dress shirt, no way. Yeah, you don't want any seafood. <laughs> Chest and private areas for men. Women under their bras. Down here. Oh, sure. you can get sweaty down there, yeah. depending on I the size that, of the I, cup. I can see that. Uh, yeah. Some people take extra showers if they feel like they need it. Others use fragrances or even layering their clothes to mask odors. Or they apply their usual deodorant to other areas, uh, even if they weren't designed for that. Oh, where's my penis deodorant? <laughs> I. You're always I think... misplacing it. <laughs> We've always said that um when we've all worked with stinky dudes. Yeah. Oh yeah. So Oh yeah. Sometimes it's not even like, hey, I wear deodorant. It's just like you just 
you got a lot more going on, and if you got a dollop, you got to put them down there. This this right. one ad re- makes it really clear. They're like, it's just a dollop down there, and I'm like, oh well, yeah, yeah. do what you got to do. And you're Don't talking, need to hear about you know it. what? Surface area. A lot of times is yeah. just so a lot the of new surface products area. for all over are designed uh, to be safer and more effective to apply in the different areas, not just under your arms. There are also a lot. Uh, of talk about natural solutions that don't require a special product, like the guy who will go name this one time that uh, I played golf with and rode in the cart with me. And I, uh, I didn't say anything to him, but I should have. And if I'd said something to him, I would have said, you smell like a caramel apple that's been dipped in a big vat of poop. <laughs> Mike, that's that why a- I use Shanahan. <laughs> Shanahan deodorant. It keeps you rolling. Thank you. For uh, your we'll pits and for your bits. God, we are so late. We are so, so late. Uh, when we come back, uh, we've got two things to talk about in this show. Rob's Costco problems and Michael Fassbender, a great new reco from Oscar Santana. We will do that when we return on the Mike O'Mara Show. Whoa, 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 whoa. But right now, I want to tell you about Dermglow. Do you want to lose 21% of your weight? I've lost over 70 pounds. Dermglowskin.com can be your one-stop shop for finally getting control of your weight problem all you have to do is click the weight loss button at dermglowskin.com take the quiz and see if you qualify a doctor will write you a prescription the pharmacy will fill it and your weight loss meds will be shipped directly to your house yesterday was medication day in the omera household that's your favorite day easy peasy i actually enjoy doing it it's fun i feel like a doctor Uh, Because of low supplies or out of stocks, a lot of people can't get these meds. You can by going to the weight loss button at Derm Glow Skin. Fully supplied, so you don't have to wait. I've lost so much weight. I was at the dentist last week, and they lost me for nearly 20 minutes in the oral saliva vacuum. It really sucked. I'm talking thin. So go ahead. Get excited. One person liked that. So go ahead, get excited, and do it all online right now at DermGlowSkin.com. Click the weight loss button and begin the best journey of your life. With DermGlow, you can do it. The uh, Rob Spiewak day uh, is uh, downstairs into his cave, do the show, walk the dog, go to Costco. Did I get it all right? Did I miss well, that's anything? Well, that's a very typical day, yeah. And I okay. went to Costco a couple of days ago to pick up a few and- items. Can I just clarify here? Anybody else in America that I know, my perspective of Costco is like, oh, this is like a trip, and you have to plan it. It's Rob can walk there. I don't. Yeah. It's that. That's why it's. Not, but that's why it's not that big no, a deal. It is. It is closest, like a Seven yeah, Eleven. If to I his wanted world. to buy milk, the closest place for me to buy milk is Costco. But it's uh, a Seven Eleven's a little further. Show to go in there sometimes. It can it be. Not? It can be. It's, but it's not if you. He could take a. I think there's a path. There is a cut His through. neighborhood. Yeah. There's a cut He through. could walk there, Mike. I put yeah. gas in my wife's car today at Costco, and because it's 7:30, and uh, the great entitled haven't opened their little elderly peepers yet, I, uh, I, I, I don't even wait in line. If I go oh, after at the gas 10 station, yeah. If yeah. I go after 10 a.m., I will be in a line with no, no less than 15 cars. I am not exaggerating yeah. that. Mm. That's how crazy it is. And, mon- and now that they're all down here, Monday through Friday, it, it is absolutely bat s crazy. It'll I'm be better after the run- AMF party, Mike. You I am talking wait. about running out of shopping carts at Costco. I, oh, that's bad. I would just love to – like, I'd love to kill him on this because I know it's mundane, but it, I didn't know he could walk there. Yeah. It's, it's so close. It's stunning. It's Mike, stunning. it's funny you bring up carts. Here is a uh, a pro hack for Costco. The way to gauge how crowded it is has nothing to do with the time of year or how full the parking lot is. Check the cart system. If there are no carts, go elsewhere because that means it's packed. That's the best indicator of if it's crowded or not. The pro carts. Tip. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, I, I love my lack Costco. Of parking space method. Well, that actually is not a great indicator. It's the cart thing. For some reason, that's the way it works Well, you go more than I do. So, uh, Um, I am a big champion of it. I love my Costco, but I have to complain that the last time I went, they normally normally have a great front-end managing, meaning that even when the store is slammed, you'll get through fast. Even at, like, Christmas time, their front-end is great. They really move What day were you there? It was a Tuesday at about 5.00. 30. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry, Monday, 5.30. Even and, better, right? 
Well, right. but no, I would go Tuesday instead of Monday, just well, because, and, you know, that's when and, people are... In the work-from-home world, Mike, he's probably battling the same thing you're battling. Because mm-hmm. there's so many people just doing what they need to do when they need to do it, because they're from home. This is true. This so, is absolutely true. The front end looked a little uh, dicey. They were really relying on the self-checkout, which I don't do, as you know. And so I get in line. So there's like maybe two people in front of me, and I use all the tricks. I look to see, first of all, the shortest line, then... The loads within the line. Because sometimes people have got just like three items. That's a fast sale. So you, you gauge it. And I got in line, and I was up to the front, and I was putting my stuff on the belt. And the lady in front of me hands her Costco card, and I watch the lady who's the checker, the check stand attendee, grab it in sort of like a cool way, almost like a flip, you know, like I'm really in control of all this. Yeah, processing her, people. Yeah, her Costco card goes down the slot under the scanner. It actually goes into the machinery, her Costco card. Oh. And she cannot scan it, and so she can't proceed. And this girl, she's youngish, probably 23, 24, the checker. The, the checker? Yeah, looks at me with saucer eyes, and she says, I'm going to have to close my lane. <laughs> because said, they have to, they can't, like, just quickly open a door and get no, under the mechanics? no. So I said, you know what? I'm sure you can fix this. I'll hang so here for a second. So was she being too cool for school when she grabbed the card? A little bit, yeah, she a was. too slicky, slicky. Yeah, and you got to do the job. Maybe, maybe a little short with the customer, huh? Maybe efficient. Efficient, I'm sure she could not, say efficient. Not a, but she didn't grab it angrily is my point. No, 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 but you're not also, this is not rocket science. You scan a card and you hand it back. This thing is swallowed into the death. I mean, it might as well be on a conveyor belt to another city. Can I ask a another city question, at this which is Please. valid here? Yeah. How come the lady just didn't hold it up and she hits it with the gun? like they uh, Because do? there is, Mike, actually, this is a good point. Pro Costco tip. The divider that you put between your orders, you know, the little bar? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 If you turn it upside down, it's open. You can put your card in it. Look at this guy. And that way God. they Full scan it packs. right away as soon as they get to your order. It's it's actually a courtesy that for the, uh, is, the checker. Is, I've, I've never, never seen this pro move <laughs> in my I life. Never, you, they actually know that's happening when you do oh, that? Oh, they love that. Because They're probably like, you don't have this guy. Yeah, you Rob, don't have to fumble for your card. That is the best Costco uh, tip. I love that. You just turn the thing over. Because yeah, because it's, it's only plastic. three quarters. It's only three quarters. It's open on the bottom. So you turn it upside down, and your card sits in there. And so the, the you put it in the uh, backwards one that separates you from the people in front of you. Exactly. So it's and the first the, thing they see. Yeah, but this lady dropped the card. Oh, they love it. They love it because there's no fumbling. And so I'm waiting there before I undo my stuff because I'm saying, this can't take that long, and I'm right here. They, before all is said and done, they have five Costco employees, and I counted. They're all staring at the, the machine, five of them. Three have their hands on their hips. They're literally not so doing she has anything. she dropped it in an area where it is impossible to retrieve. So then they start slowly pulling it apart, and there's two iPhone flashlights going mm. in. They can't even see the card. Okay. And I said, you know what? She said, sir, you're going to have to un- undo your belt, your, your belt and go. Not, not that way. Take your pants Take, off? No, no, no. Take the stuff off the belt and go to another line. I said, Okay. Okay, no big deal. You have a lot of stuff on the belt? No, no, like maybe 10 items. And she said, I'm really, really sorry. I said, you know what? Could happen to anybody. And then you got a free Samsung TV. (laughs) So I go to the other line. And, of course, the whole time I'm back behind three huge orders, and we're all watching the circus go on. And I'm thinking, you know what? Instead of having five people look for this card, why not use one of them to open another lane? But, no, they're all standing there with their hands on their hips. And the moment... The very moment my first item gets scanned, the card comes out. There you go. And, so uh, I should have just when you went over and got F you. Yeah, and I <laughs> throttled her. I throttled her. <laughs> you, by the, the beatings neck. begin. <laughs> the I beatings so, have to begin. <laughs> so you take the plastic divider. You yep. put the card in it. I like that tip. I'm going to do that the next time I go. You're gonna you're gonna go up five notches in the estimation. When of the I checker. get my protein bars. 
for a thousand dollars. I'll go. That's uh, that's fantastic. But anyway, get your ass together, Costco. I give you all my money. Make my day easy, please. Right. I get one thing every time I go. What's that? Protein bars and Adidas ankle socks. Uh, we'll be right back after this, ladies and gentlemen. You only wear them once. <laughs> Discovering quality kids' clothes just got easier. Say goodbye to the struggle of finding a place where high quality and cute coexist. Because Caden Lane has cracked the code. Founded yes. in 2005 by a single mom with a passion for creating better and cuter clothes, accessories, and keepsakes, Caden Lane is on a mission to make mom's lives easier. Caden Lane is a brand that's more than just hype with over 70,000 five-star reviews. That's a big deal. And millions of satisfied customers. Look at that cute. For Look baby June. Baby right June, my, yo, my newest right cousin. Uh, right experience on. softness like never before and add personalization that makes Caden Lane the ultimate gift. We just recently gave it to Finley's mom. She loves it because she just had a baby. Don't miss out on their fun bedtime ritual with their Color Me pajamas where kids can color their own PJs. That's it's awesome. Fun. This is the brand you've been waiting for. Bringing joy and style to those special moments you'll remember forever. Caden Lane is your one-stop shop for all your newborn, infant, and toddler apparel. Head to cadenlane.com slash TMOS and use the code for 20% off your order. Tell them that TMOS sent you. All right, Oscar. Uh, you, Mike, you this kind of makes me look like a Jedi, doesn't it? You can take it off now, Rob. Thank you. I you like it. it He's my head it. warm. It's disturbing. <laughs> I'm not sure it sold the product with you putting it on your melon. Uh, but it's lovely. Mike, yeah, lovely. it could not hurt. Uh, I, you brought up Michael Fassbender, and I thought you were going to review like a feature film, and then you said there's some sort of documentary going on yeah. uh, about this, and you were kind of so, raving about it. Um, I spent a good time with Mac yesterday in, the, in his vehicle, by the way. Kia, strong. What, what type of model do you have, by the way, Mac? It's a Nero. Okay, Kira Nero. Sounds like a spaceship. A lot of fun. Did you get to back up? At the backed up. I heard the... Did you, lap, uh, but... did you fiddle around in it? Ah, that's because Nero that's a, fiddled wide. I get it. Rome burning I get it. Yes, yes, yes. So. Yeah. Uh, and he said, I don't have any subscription television. Um, uh, he doesn't have cable. He just watches YouTube. Okay. And he gave YouTube me a bunch TV of re too, recos. Right. Yeah. But he doesn't even use YouTube TV. He, like, it's just YouTube. It's just, just YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Yeah. That's all yeah. he has. Free YouTube. That's what he did instead of going to college. And I went there, and I said, because uh, when I got home, I'm like, how is this? How is this? I know there's a bunch of stuff on YouTube, but like there's not movies on there. And sure as ass, there's this movie, uh, Road to Le Mans, or Le Mans, however you say it. Le Mans. Um, with Michael Fassbender. And it's it was a series, but now a documentary all put together. Wasn't he in a feature about uh, auto racing? Well, this is what's crazy. I didn't know this. Yeah. And I feel like it was out in 2023. You can get, you can watch it for free in totality. Pretty well reviewed movie, and this is what's awe inspiring to me. The man who's at the top of his game as an actor. Mm -hmm. It smash cuts into him talking to his father about wanting to be a racer when he was a young boy, and him discussing the fact that when he turned forty, because he had you know such unbridled success mm -hmm. in acting, that he was going to pursue an effort to become a professional racer. Like give up the 40. give up the acting and stop wow. acting and go after becoming a professional racer. And he's got the body type for it, right? He's kind of lithe and, you know, and can uh, he looks like a, he could be an auto racer. If well, he did it, he should change his name to Michael Fastbender. No. Oh. I'm sorry. I look, I can't <laughs> sometimes I can't discipline him. I mean, it, it's funny. It's not funny. It's a great idea is what it is. We're you lame. put your card right in the divider, Mike. That, that was valuable. So, <laughs> kind of 30 so, so <laughs> Porsche teams up with Michael uh, Fassbender, and they said, okay, let's chronicle this and make this branded content. We will document everything that goes into this. Uh, and the emotions... That you see this man go through, someone that you that had, is used to being at the top of his game at everything. It's yeah. a struggle for him to uh, do this. It is. I was so like engulfed and engrossed by the emotion that he's going through. Does he ever wreck? That multiple times. Really? Wow. Wow. 
Wow. And there are times where you're like, stop doing this, dude. Stop doing this. You're going to like end your life, and it's going to be curtains and it's yeah. for the rest the of your career. Mans? Yes. And where is he and now I, in this journey? Do you know? He's, he's, he, he, I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil oh, okay. it. Okay. All right. But All right. I was, uh, the level of respect that I have for this actor just went up like, I, I would say, 30 points, and it was already at its highest pinnacle. He's a guy that makes wonderful choices. I think, mm. I think, I think in yeah. Hollywood, so many people have talent in the acting department, yeah. but, but the choices you make shows your smarts. And he's made a lot of smart movies. That's a good a point. A lot of really it smart. It really does, But yeah. that's amazing that he's, like, doing 40, this, too, you know? At 40, he decides that he's going to go after his dream, and he teams up with Patrick Dempsey and Portia, and they even Patrick just the— Patrick Dempsey, the, the actor? Yes. Okay. Who's, Right. Prolific in in auto racing, isn't that and when you good talk looking. About, when you talk, <laughs> yes, he is. He is handsome, Rob. Thank yes. You. When you talk about uh, the legacy or the uh, the pedigree or the history of actors and auto racing, it starts with Paul Newman, and there yeah. seems to be this James Dean. It's like the, well, James Dean be, didn't do as well as Paul Newman, and that was more <laughs> of an amateur. Well, he never gave up his amateur status. That was terrible. I'm sorry, Jimmy Dean. That's not too soon. Uh, no, he's no, been it's time. not too soon. But it's they, just bad fast, taste. A lot of he's not the first actor that's gotten involved with this, and right. but at a high level like Le Mans, what is the is that F one? Is that Formula One? No, no. So I don't. This is I. I'm, there are people out there that are more well versed, and 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 um, I, I just he's 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 driving a GT three for uh, Porsche GT three. So yes, it's. It's a different class, it, but you're going 200 miles per hour, and, and 200 miles per hour, mm -hmm. and you've got someone that, like it's just, it's why would I get the struggle? You want to do it? You want to try something you new? You went to the school, and you yeah. still want to do it? You should do that. You like that? You like driving race cars? But yeah, I do. But he also, as uh, Fast Fastbender says in the opening, he said this is the type of sport. That you need, like you, you need a bankroll. Yeah, of yeah. Of course. Oh, of course, absolutely. And but I would think he would be able to get a pretty lucrative sponsorship. Yeah. Well, that that that's why it's possible now. At right. Forty for at that right. it was at that time where he said, "I think it's possible now to do this because he's had such success right. in acting that." And if you're Porsche and you're an ad executive, let's go back full circle to your dad, mm -hmm. and you hear that this is an option that Michael Fassbender. That you could shoot a branded documentary, very cool, uh, chronicling his world from amateur to essentially professional racer. Oh, you just gave it away. Does he win? What happens is absolutely like it, it, it left me heartbroken yet satisfied. Okay, that's a good tease. Good the road free on Mons. YouTube. The road free on, and on it's YouTube. Free Check on it out YouTube. on YouTube. Wow. I yeah. watched another moving video on uh, YouTube, a little different category. It was a South Korean donut factory where they were making them really fast, right into the fire. Did they have it a corporate the, sponsorship? Not. Uh, it was all squiggly writing. I don't know what that. <laughs> I don't know what that. I don't know uh, about that. We'll take a break <laughs> and we will come back uh, with uh, the the flip of side right here yes. on the Mike O'Mara show. Everybody, a quick no one wanted me to drive at Le Mans. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, what's on your to-do list that you find overwhelming? You probably want to tackle that ancient box of videotapes, photos. A lot of people have those in a My papa's pen. doing this. Yes. Oh, is I it? Saw That's him awesome. Yesterday, and he's got his legacy box that they deliver to you to put your stuff in. Awesome. And he's taking all his photos out of his photo album. I saw a picture of him in front of uh, the Egyptian pyramids. On, on top of a, a camel. I was like, where'd this come from? That's this is great. You know, you have motivated me since we've all done it. I'm going to call my sister and say, because she's got a lot of stuff, and I want to mm -hmm. copy. And yeah. I yeah. want her, I'm going to get her in on that this week, and I want to do that because Legacy Box is 
the best way to do it. They're the best game in town to preserve all of your memories. If you weren't yep. sure where to start, Legacy makes it easy. Legacy Box makes it easy to simply send in your Legacy Box filled with camcorder tapes, film reels, pictures, then get back digital copies that can be easily enjoyed, shared, and organized. It's like magic. And by going to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS, you can enjoy 50% off when you get started with Legacy Box today. We've all used it. We all love Legacy Box. It's like a time machine and takes you back. And it lasts forever. After 10 years in business, Legacy Box is the world's largest digitizer. And it's all done right here in the USA. Be a hero by rescuing your family's... Gotta just... You're a hero, Mike. Uh, be a... I gotta start again. Trust me. Not a peep. Be a hero by rescuing your family's most cherished memories that haven't been watched or enjoyed in years. Go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to save 50%. Buy today. Send it in when you're ready. Thank you. Legacy Box. Flip side time, Here's everybody. Julia. Hello. The flip side. Don't you love when good things happen to good people? I do. It doesn't happen a lot, but this is a really good thing. You know, there's that big football game coming up this Sunday. It's called uh -huh. a Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and there's going to be two teams that are battling it out. But the commercials and stuff like that, they're a very big deal. And guess who will be voicing a promo for CBS on the Super Bowl broadcast? Yes, finally, a reason to watch the big game. Thoroughbreds congregates in Kentucky, and their only goal is victory at Valhalla. And we have a shining star at sunset. Dude Walker. The PGA yes. Championship on CBS and streaming on Paramount Fox. Big stuff. That's a big gig. Isn't that I great? Love, dude. Yeah. Big, love big it. Gig. He's so great. Man. Dude uh, is the best. Yeah. Kid, uh, pride, right? True oh, pride. Oh, my That's God. That's one of our yes. friends. Look, he's got that way. I mean, we've loved him for years. And, and that he's been also so means... generous with us over the years. Way to go, mm -hmm. dude. Way to go. Things like, dude. I, that's why you keep doing it, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. he's great Congrats. at it. He is really great at it, and he's one of the nicest, most humble people you'll ever meet. Yes. Wonderful man. Busted two buttons when I found out about that. That's that great. is so cool. Way to go, dude. Oh, now, do you know actor Michael Cera? Or Sarah, yeah, I guess yeah, it kind is. Of a Sarah. Mousy, yeah, Michael Sarah. Looking guy was, yeah, uh, he is. He played Zuckerberg, right? Yes. No, um, did, but he, did he play? No, 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 he no, not, no. No, Michael that's not Michael Sarah, Sarah. And I get him confused. He was in Superbad. With, Juno. Superbad. Yeah, Juno, Superbad. Juno. And his okay. perhaps best known for playing uh, George Jr. on, uh, on what do you call it? Uh, Arrested Development. Oh, it's Arrested Development. Yeah, he yes. was great in that. But he is a little off the beaten path, he's a little odd. And I don't know if they're setting us up for a big Super Bowl reveal or anything, but, you know, not only Michael Sarah is something, there is a, a salve, an ointment, a lotion called CeraVe. And oh. this commercial was dropped this week on YouTube saying that all along he was behind the ointment. So if you want moisturization, you got to thank Michael Sarah. And I just hope it's real because this is a great spot. <laughs> Just seeing this out. I'm Michael Sarah, and I'm pleased to announce that this is my cream. <laughs> Sarah V. Oh, you didn't know? Generosity. <laughs> the truth has been hiding in plain sight. I am Sarah V. <laughs> Can human skin truly be this moisturized? Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Let my cream hydrate you. I like this. I like this. Skin, 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 skin. <laughs> Three. Essential. I'm telling them our story. Sarah V. Developed with Michael Sarah V. That's me. <laughs> That's Sarah. 
So well done. I don't I don't care well if done. it's fake or anything, no. but I say look for something on the Super Bowl. I think there's well, something. Well, it's really fun to that. do that, and they get it. I like it. My favorite part when I really started thinking that commercial <laughs> yeah. was when he was both the masseuse and the uh, and, and the, the recipient. The, yeah. the recipient. Yeah. It was. Awesome. I liked when he great. talked to the uh, dolphin with the horn <laughs> in <laughs> its own Hawaiian language. Dolphin. Yeah, it's probably legit. It's going to be on the yeah. Super Bowl, I would think, hopefully. But <laughs> it's so under the radar. I got so mad. You know, I do hate when they blatantly tease a commercial for the Super Bowl. I was watching commercials the other day, saw a teaser for Arnold for, I think, State Farm, <sighs> and I wanted to see the spot, so I went to YouTube and then had to watch a commercial before I watched the commercial. And I'm saying, Is it worth it? No, it's not worth it. Okay. So anyway, uh, I understand this football game is on uh, Sunday. So if you want to see the commercials, tune it in your uh, local CBS affiliate. Very Check good. your local listings. Let's close with this. While we're talking about the Super Bowl, there's a comedian called Justin McKinney. He's very funny. And he has a problem with the fact that, and they have done this for a few years now, the NFL talks about Super Bowl babies. Apparently nine months after the time of the Super Bowl, there's a rise in births. So the NFL put out this commercial. You know, showing, oh, these are all the babies born nine months after this year's Super Bowl. This is how old they are now. So the NFL's taking credit for this. Like, mom and dad are watching the Super Bowl. They get horny. They go into the bedroom, have sex. Nine months later, there's a baby. Okay, first of all, do you know what other event, what other day happens within a week of the Super Bowl every year? Valentine's Day. Exactly. I think that's when married guys are getting laid. <laughs> Ladies, is there any day a man is less attractive than Super Bowl Sunday? <laughs> Ooh, beer breath and buffalo farts. I gotta have that. <laughs> Food for thought, and that's hey, all I got for Good today. Good point. Sometimes you, it's right in front of you. you it is. You just have it to is. acknowledge it. That's it. We gotta get out of here. We'll be returning tomorrow for another episode of the Mike O'Mara Show. Thank you all very much for all of your support. Keep it coming. Buy the stickers, support the show, get your bonus subscription or subscription. Hey, man. <laughs> Something's wrong with my upper plate today. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana. Michael Mara saying so long, everybody. Upper plate. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Michael Mara bonus show. Get it at michaelmarashow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment.